Hi, I'm Rod from UnitedTaps.com, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to be sharing with you how I have dealt with various tap-related injuries over the years. I'm actually getting over one now, and we'll come to that, but I'm going to start with my first of three major issues I faced from tap dancing. So there was a time when I would some days teach six or seven hours in a row, which is a little bit crazy. And uh, I come from a style of tap dance where unless you're actually doing a heel sound, you keep the heels up off the floor. Well, constantly jumping and stepping, and I generally tend to tap hard on the hard side, um, with your heels up puts a lot of tension and pressure in here. And what eventually happened is I got tendonitis in the sort of like the upper ankle, lower calf area, about right through there on both sides. I got that severe, so severe, I was literally teaching classes. I would, you know, I would have a chair, I'm holding onto the back of the chair and, and having to support like 90% of my weight and then just barely trying to tap and generally having to keep my heels down to reduce the pain. And I taught this way for a good chunk of time. I don't know how long, was it six months, a year? It was, it was, it, it, it was extended. Um, and it was, of course, I was terrified because here's, this is what I do for a living. And all of a sudden, I can't do it without holding on to the back of the chair. And luckily, my, the studios I worked at were very gracious about, you know, yeah, you've got to do what you got to do. Um, but what finally solved it for me was one simple stretch. Now, before I go any further, I am not a doctor. I'm not a physician. I don't have any official training. I'm not a physical therapist. So I am not giving you medical advice. I'm sharing what I did and it happened to work for me and maybe it will for you or not, but if you want medical advice, go to your doctor. That's not, I'm not that person. Um, but I do want to share what did I do? What was this, this, this one stretch that basically changed my life and got me back to tapping again? And that's this simple stretch. Basically, I've turned my feet out sort of like a bad first position. I don't have my heels touching. Um, and I would just squat down and I shift all my weight back into my heels and try to get my heels as low as possible. Now, if, you're, if your legs are not tight in this area, you might not feel any stretch whatsoever, nothing. And that's fine. You probably won't have a problem with uh, tendonitis down there. Um, but uh, if you do, you might feel, if you do have problems with tendonitis or you feel that th those muscles are really tight, this stretch here Again, I'm just letting all my weight sit down to back towards my heels. I'm not just sitting down on my heels. My heels are actually up because that uh, gets me more stretch. And you can, you, can, you can play with it. You can rock forward or rock back. Well, you don't want to go too far forward because then it shifts the weight to the uh, ball of the foot and you're not getting that stretch. Um, but you might you know, shift one way or the other. But that's it. That is the stretch that I did. And most, and most importantly, I can't stress this enough, it was doing it after I tap dance. If you tap a lot, a lot, and you're, you're experiencing any kind of problems like tendonitis or knee problems or hip problems, I can't emphasize enough the huge difference it can make if you do your stretching after you're done tap dancing. That, because when you don't, basically those muscles just stay tight all the re rest of the night, all through the night and through the next day. And that's just bad for them. It, it, it's just, I used to get up and walk like uh, like this in the morning when I woke up because my muscles were like this. When I stretch stretch after tap dancing, I don't have that problem. All right, so that's the first one. So that that doing that consistently solved that. Now, if I don't do that consistently, even today, if I stop doing it, if I'm tapping a lot and I don't do that, boy, that ten I can feel that tendonitis coming back. Another one that I do in conjunction with that is just. A basic hamstring stretch, keep my, my uh, like right now I can actually feel on my right side, it's actually pulling in that exact spot. So that's another one that I will do on a regular basis. Um, I, I do those generally every morning, um, but when I'm good about it, I try, try to remember after I tap, I, I, some days I'm lax, um, but I'm sensitive to it. As soon as it starts hurting, I'm like, okay, I need to go back to doing, doing both of those stretches after I tap dance, and that makes a significant difference. So that was my first issue, the tendonitis. That's how I fixed it. It's, it's, it's never gotten out of control again. As long as I do those stretches, I'm good to go. Um, so let's talk about my, my second major issue. And that is basically this big toe joint is uh, 
we could say worn out. I went to a foot doctor, did an x-ray, it's probably been 10 years ago, give or take, and he wanted to do surgery. He said you have, uh, it was a hallux limitus or hallux rigidus, basically a turf toe, but you're basically this big toe joint is shot. The mobility in it is limited. I can't bend it back as far as on the other side. Um, and I would, I would experience like significant pain after teaching. Uh, I'd take my shoe off and that would just be like, oh, it'd be like someone just poking a knife in that joint. It was, it was really painful. Um, so he wanted to do surgery. I did some research online and, and what I found just from my research was about half the people who got surgery said, yes, this is better. And the other half either said, no, it's no better. So I just, I couldn't walk for six weeks while I was healing and I paid all that money and went through that pain and not, it didn't get better. And some people even said, well, now it's actually worse. <laughs> so my feeling was like, let's try some other things, shall we? Let's try some other things. So, so what he did for me, um, uh, he gave me these, uh, they're not like, they're not custom orthotics. This is just like a normal shoe. I actually buy these, uh, you can buy them on Amazon. It's called, uh, from powerstep.com. I don't know which exact model this is, but it's just a, a little uh, insert for my shoe. And I have them in all my shoes. They're in my tap shoes, they're in my tennis shoes, they're in every shoe that I wear. And what it does is it shifts the weight back towards the heel instead of rocking it forward where there's pressure on that toe. So basically the doctor, when he, x-rayed my foot. He said this long bone I have right here in my foot is extra long. And what that means is when I'm tapping on the balls of my feet and I'm constantly pounding, you know, steps and shuffle steps, I need the hops, all that stuff. This, this bone is constantly being jammed into that joint and because it's long, it does even more damage. Um, so that's part of the problem is, is another part of the problem is tap shoes with the heel raises that up, which adds to the pressure that's put on that toe. And for a while, especially in older videos, uh, I've worn various uh, versions of tennis shoe taps and I've literally put taps on tennis shoes so I could get a flat shoe to deal with this problem. I wasn't trying to be cool, I was trying to solve a pain problem. Um, now eventually I did go back to normal tap shoes. Uh, these are Jason Samuel Smith's shoe. Uh, but when I, whenever I get a new pair, I always have the heel cut down just to one inch. They're, I'm not sure how high they are, they're an inch and a half or inch and a quarter, I don't know, but I cut them down to just an inch high to reduce that pressure. Plus I have those inserts which keep more of the um, weight back on my heel. So those are, those are some of the things that I did to mitigate that, but those didn't ultimately, those weren't the final solution or the, the best solution. They didn't reduce the pain the most. Oddly enough, um, the thing that reduced the pain the most was this simple stretch. I just fold the toes under and I push down and it's, it's mildly painful, I don't know, on a scale of one to 10, the pain level maybe a three to a four on that big toe joint. Nevertheless, I would do this every day. I still do this pretty much every day. Um, that stretch, and then also for whatever reason, the, the, again, the ham, this hamstring stretch as well. Those two, when done consistently, massively reduce the pain in my toe. So the way it is now, if I'm, if I'm tapping a lot, I'm gonna, I'll start feeling it in the toe and I can moderate it with, by doing this stretch and the hamstring stretch consistently. On top of that, if I ice the toe after I tap dance, that makes a huge difference. And how I ice, I didn't think there would be a big deal. Well, you should put ice on it. Who cares how you do it, you know? It matters, at least for me, it really mattered. I used to have an ice pack that I would wrap around the toe. That was okay, but I actually had it at one point, um, I frost bit the skin. Oh, come on. Calls from Amy, Valley PA. Now, in conjunction with that stretch, the other thing that massively made a difference was icing my toe every time after I tap dance. And I'm not perfect about it. I'll still have days where I skip, but if I'm gonna tap a lot, uh, and especially if I'm tapping a lot in several days in a row, I'll start to feel it in that toe and then I'll definitely get back to icing it. And what I was very surprised by is how you ice it matters, at least for me. Originally what I would do was just wrap one of those little ice packs that you put in the freezer. I would wrap that around my toe, put a rubber band and, and leave it for I don't know how long. At some point though, I left it on too long and it kind of, uh, 
it ice burned the skin or however, I don't know what that, that was like frostbit the, the, the top layer. It was fine, but it, after that I said, well, maybe there's a different way. And so I started doing ice water. Huge difference. I can't tell you how much more effective the ice water is for my toe than that other ice method. And you don't get the, uh, the frostbite <laughs> on the skin. So if, if you have a, a, a toe problem or a foot problem and you are going to ice it, I really recommend you try just doing like, I, I went to just a local store and bought a rectangular plastic container because that's perfect size for my foot and I have a big foot. So. <laughs> um, but that's perfect. Put, it in, put some ice water in there and put it in there and make, I'm telling you, huge difference. So much more effective than wrapping the ice around. Um, and so that's what I've been doing and I, you know, I've managed this for now, it's been, like I said, probably it's been 10 years or so and I've managed it and no surgery and like I said, it, it, I'll still feel it, you know, if I'm tapping a lot, I'm going to feel it. it, it comes on, but as long as I do the icing and I do those stretches, I can manage it. And that's the biggest thing about all these issues, it's not like they ever really go away, but, but I found ways to manage them so I can still do what I want to do. So that was my second huge one, this, uh, this bad toe joint, and I still have to manage it today. My most recent one, and this was probably maybe, I don't know, six weeks ago, a month or something like that, I don't know, um, maybe longer, is I was doing a maxi forward, just a basic old maxi forward, and when I did that toe, I felt like a little pop or a little something in that knee, um, and it hurt a little, but I just kind of kept going, I was like, whatever, and you know, over the next days and weeks, it just got worse and worse and worse and more and more painful. Um, which was really scary, and, you know, because you look, you look up online, it's like, well, it sounds like it's probably a meniscus tear. Yeah, I can't really, not much you can do about that, so you're going to have to have surgery. I'm like, I don't want surgery. I'm like, I'm going to see, I'm going to do everything I can first, and let's see, let's see where we get. <laughs> that was kind of my approach. So, basically, I cut all tapping to an absolute minimum. Um, I was teaching classes via Zoom uh, and recording for my local studios, so I had to keep those going, but aside from that, I basically tried to cut out all tapping. And then even when I was tapping for those videos, at one point I was tapping as soft as I possibly could, which is not fun for me. I like to tap hard, and be, I like the physicality of like, like that feels good to me, I really enjoy them. But like, you know, like, I just don't get into that as much, you know? I just, I like the physicality. So, I was tapping super, super, super light, and, um, and, and I went to regular icing my knees. Even if I wasn't tapping that day, I was hitting my knees with ice. Um, I was doing lots of stretches. I did, I actually had to change, I was doing um, strength training, I had to change some of the things I was doing. I was doing, and this probably didn't help, I was doing squat jumps with uh, 50 pounds of weight, 225 pound barbells. I had cut that out completely. That just went gone. Um, and I was doing some exercises, some hamstring exercises with rings. But, but what I've kind of, I'm going to share some of the exercises I've been doing that I, I did some more research online, find out, well, what are other people doing and, 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 and modifying them and making things work. So I'm just going to share a couple of the ones that I think are probably really helpful. And this one is kind of like a hamstring and glute exercise. So you just push up as hard as you can, and then you pull your heels in towards you so that the hamstring muscle is engaged there, and it's pretty tight. Same thing with your, um, your gluteus maximus there. So you're all pulling that up, and then you'll drop. And I'll do like 10 of those, um, which strengthens the hamstrings and strengthen, strength, strengthens the, the gluteus maximus. And that's, I learned, my wife went through almost a, a same thing, and she went through physical therapy, and the, the number one focus for them was actually strengthening the rear end. They said that basically that is the source of stability for your entire leg, especially your knees. So if you want to give them more stability, you want to make things better for them and have less stress on the actual joint, you strengthen your rear end. Um, so I was kind of already doing those, but in a different way. So that, that's one of the exercises that I did. Um, also another one that, again, I, I kind of stole from my wife that she showed me was laying on my side here. and. Um, trying to keep the, I'm, I'm sure I don't have perfect form, Tight, tighten the stomach muscles and lift this knee up, but don't let this hip rotate. Keep this hip right here, lift this up, and then you'll feel that tighten and down, and up and down. Now, she had a special band, 
that she would do, and I think she did a hold. I just do the ups and downs. I do about 20 repetitions per leg, and I've been doing that. Um, and that also, I believe, has been helping. So those, those are some of the physical exercises that I'm doing that are helping, plus the ice. I got these uh, online. It's an ice pack with a, uh, a band attached to it so that has Velcro. So I can just Velcro each one around my knees because actually my left one started to hurt too. It's like, really? You're going to do two at once? The left one was never ba as bad as the right, but so I, 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 I ice those. I also, for my shoe, now this was a catch-22, let me tell you. What I found was in, in, in when I was in the worst stages of this, when the knee was the worst and I could barely tap, is that he just heel sounds were the one of the most painful, um, and so that this I just used my logic. I'm like, well, let's get something to cushion, cushion that blow. Um, so I just got these basic heel inserts. Now the, the thing about these though is they raise your heel in the tap shoe, which is exactly what I did and one for that big toe. Like this, I was like, oh, so what, do I do this and then put more pressure on my big toe? And my my ultimate conclusion was. My knees were, were a bigger problem than my big toe, so I said, we're going to go with the cushions and see if they help. If they help, then we're, we're going to use them at least until the knee gets better, and then we'll just have to do whatever we can to manage the big toe. So that's what I've been doing, and these, these have helped. The heel sounds, the heel drops have not hurt my heels as much. I still have to be careful. I can't go crazy, um, but I am. It, 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 things are improving, like really linearly and a really good... I feel good, I seem to get stronger and stronger and stronger and more able to handle stress. The stress of that tapping, the, the, the knee joint seems to be able to handle that more and more and more and more. So we're moving in the right direction. Uh, but those cushions definitely made a big difference. Now, interestingly enough, and I don't know if it's because of the cushioning or because the, the knee's getting stronger, the heels are not so much an issue. Um, shuffles have kind of been an issue because there's a snapping back of the leg, right? And that, that has a little bit of a jerk on that joint. Um, so I have to be careful with those, although I'm, I'm building up tolerance for those. The one thing I still don't have a tolerance for are pullbacks. Um, probably about a week ago, I was doing some choreography, and I put in, uh, I put in a pullback into a waltz clog, because I was feeling good, my knees were feeling good. I'm like, all right, I think I'm gonna give this a shot. And I did that, and I did like a couple of them, and it was like, ooh, too much, too much too soon. So I still, the, the pullbacks are really dicey. Now a double pull, I can kind of, kind of, I can manipulate my weight and do a little bit more ankle work versus snapping the leg, so I can play with that. But like for like a waltz clog pull, where it kind of has to snap off that one foot, those I'm I'm I'm, I'm holding off for a while. I want I want to get more strength be, uh, and more stability back in that knee. But the knee is does seem to be healing now. How the question for me is how how much like if this is normal, you know, will I ever get all the way back to normal, or how how good can I get? Because um, it just keeps getting better and better and better. I'm hopeful I'll get back to normal, but I'm not, I don't know. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of have to, we'll see. I'm getting close, like I'm, I'm getting close for sure. Um, but that, that, that's, that's the things I've been doing for my knee. Though I have those exercises, the glute strengthening on the, on the back and the side, and then I've got the um, uh, ice. Plus I do, you know, I do a full stretching regimen most days of all the hamstring stretch. I also stretch my quads. That's another thing I will say. In the past, I have had minor knee issues and almost always it was just a muscle imbalance where the quad is overdeveloped compared to the hamstrings and it wasn't, and I wasn't stretching it, right? I would do these kind of stretches, but not ever take the time to do those stretches. And in all those situations where I had minor knee pain and problems, whenever I started stretching the quad on a regular basis and doing any kind of exercises to build the strength of the hamstrings always went away. Now that's just for me, that was just my situation, uh, but that was, it was nice to know that for me that was just a simple muscle imbalance fix. This is a little bit more severe. <laughs> uh, but it is getting better and those are the things that I am doing. All right. So, you know, maybe some of that will help, help you, I, I hope so. But I just wanted to share that because as I posted, uh, I posted a video of practice exercise as like a practice session knee recovery. Because um, I, I, I wanted to do, like really do some tapping and kind of build it up. Because you have to put some stress on the joint for it to build back up. I mean, not when it's like really inflamed and in a mess. But as it's starting to get better, in order to get it, build it stronger, you have to add a little stress to it, just not too much. And that's kind of tricky to find. 
Uh, so I posted that and other people were like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm dealing with this injury or I'm recovering from this or I've had this problem. And I thought, you know, I, I might as well just share all, all of my problems. I share all of my you know, toe, knee, and ankle problems uh, and different things I did in hopes that maybe it'll help somebody. Um, so yeah. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, feel free to share your experiences. Yeah, if you have great, if any of you have been through the knee thing and you're like, oh, this one exercise changed my life, share it with me. I want to know, <laughs> right? Or same thing for you know the toe, the turf toe, the hallux rigidus. If you got something for that, um, if you have like another thing, I mean, my stuff's working pretty good, but I'm still I'm still open to new ideas. The, the ankle tendonitis, I, that's not really. The, any serious issue for me anymore uh, but, but feel free if you want to share for that as well that's cool all right thank you guys so much for well i guess we didn't tap today but for you know sharing your time with me i appreciate it uh, of course i'm ron help from unitedtaps.com making you happier and healthier through tap dance